Yo, what is up you guys? My name is Benji and welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to go through my portfolios. I want to showcase all the positions I currently own. I also am going to reveal the exact amount that I'm earning from dividend income for every single month and throughout the entire year. I haven't ever updated my entire dividend tracker to the full extent of all my portfolios. So normally when I update the dividend tracker, I just add in my holdings for my main portfolio, which is what we see right here. But I've never actually went through and added in all the different stocks I pay dividends from my various portfolios, which I currently um, own, I think, six or seven different portfolios, maybe eight different portfolios right now. And now that I'm thinking about it, I didn't even add some of the positions in a portfolio that I totally forgot about. But that's besides the point. I added in most of all of my positions in my various portfolios to see exactly how much I'm currently earning from dividend income alone. I'm super excited about the results of this and I'm really excited to share it with you guys. So let's get right into it. So first off, I wanna go through real quickly here because a lot of you have already seen these different positions, but let's go through real quickly and showcase all the different positions in my various portfolios. So right here, we have my long-term dividend portfolio. This is going to be sorted from most shares to least amount of shares as of right now. So at and is our biggest holding, Apple's are number two, Verizon's number three, and so on and so forth. I would say that this portfolio is actually shaping out to be sort of my dream portfolio. It's a nice mix of stocks of some of my favorite companies in the entire world. Um, a lot of these different stocks that I hold are companies in which I engage in with. Uh, I'm a really big fan of JP Morgan, for example, the bank. I also do like at and and Verizon for phone carriers. Apple's one of my favorite products. Obviously, I love the iPhone and all the other Apple products out there. That's always an easy rule of thumb when investing. Invest in the companies that you believe in that you use every single day. That's what I tell a lot of new investors, at least. The next one is the ETF portfolio. I just started this portfolio, I think, around a month ago. So this one, I, we are scaling up, but for right now, it's pretty small. Here's everything in here. One of my favorite holdings in here is the Q Yield, also JEPI. A lot of these positions, I'm hoping I can get to a massive point over the next few years here. But this portfolio is pretty small right now, valued at just around $3,000. I am depositing a few hundred bucks per week as of right now, and I might ramp it up pretty soon here. Next up, we have the long-term growth portfolio, which is not very important because none of these stocks really pay dividends, or if they do, they're very, very small. But just to give you a real quick look at this, on top of those portfolios, I do have a wheel portfolio, which I, to be honest, did not even add this in my dividend tracker, um, but it's pretty small, honestly. The portfolio is valued at around $1,500, $1,300 or something. Yeah, 1321 as of now. So we do have some AT&T in here, which pays a dividend. Some of these other ones might. I'm not really exactly sure, uh, but this is a pretty small portfolio overall. And next up, we have the M1 Finance portfolio valued at $61.74. This portfolio is full of growth stocks. So these do not pay a dividend, at least not that I know of. Maybe a few of these pay a very, very small dividend once again, but nothing really worthwhile. But nothing that's really going to change the overall um, income for my dividend stocks. And the reason I bought all these stocks is not for the dividends, for the growth. All right, so if we add in all the different stocks from my various portfolios, a few of them, which I didn't even record in this video, we are sitting at 523,000 in balance. We're up around $60,000 or maybe $65,000 as of all time. Uh, the portfolio's current dividend yield is 3.38%, but the yield on cost is a bit higher, 3.87. The annual income is $17,715. Now, this is mostly because I've really been hammering and buying a lot of the Q yield lately, the QYLD. I've been buying a lot of that lately, but let's go see how much we are actually earning. But if we click on the income calculator, we can see how much we are earning over the next year. So 17715 and in May, we earn $2,200 in dividends. June, we earn $1,000. July, $1,100. And then back to $2,200 and so on and so forth. This is massive. $2,200 is actually starting to feel like a lot of money here. For a while there, my goal was just to get to $1,000 per month. But now hitting $17,000 above $17,000, I think the goal should be $2,000 per month on average. Um, because although we are hitting $2,000 plus months, we are only hitting that four times a year right now. Which is great, but it'd be awesome to hit that multiple times more per year, of course. What's also pretty cool is if we sort the annual income from top to bottom, we see the Q yield currently. I got $3,000 of annual income from Q yield all together. AT&T, we got almost $2,500 of annual income. Verizon, $1,631. PBA, we got $1,263. So a lot of these annual incomes are to the point now where they can cover an entire bill of mine. And that's my goal here. My goal for investing in the stock market is really to try to earn enough money on a yearly basis in the form of income through dividends to cover hopefully most or all of my living expenses. Now, if you take my dividend income currently plus all my real estate income from rentals, I am actually pretty much there. What's pretty cool is now I'm to the point where my passive income can now take care and cover 
at least most of my living expenses, I would say 90% or more, um, which I would consider that pretty awesome at 28 years old. So where do we go from here? The next goal is definitely to get to a point to where all of my bills are covered from my dividend income as well as from my real estate cash flow. And then on top of that, earn even more income to then use that money to like travel with. Or really just have extra money on the side of that to spend on really whatever I want. Because if all my bills are covered from my passive income and then having more passive income on top of that, that's when I'll you know give myself the green light to go ahead and do that. But until then, we're reinvesting all the dividend income right back into more dividend paying stocks. And this is how the compounding snowball effect happens. Now, one of the hard things about growing my dividend income right now is the fact that a lot of these dividend paying stocks that I like a lot are up so much in price. A lot of them are way higher than my average costs. Um, and the higher a lot of these dividend paying stocks go, obviously the lower yield you're going to be receiving because these dividend stocks pay a certain amount per month or per quarter. And the yield is going to depend on the price of the share. So the idea is you want to get into these dividend stocks at a low, at the lowest cost possible, hold on to them long term, have the price go up over time, and then hopefully lock in that really, really high yield from whenever you bought into it at. But it's really crazy. Stocks like Realty Income we saw on May 14th of 2020 at trading around 50 bucks. Now it's at 67.79. We got stocks like AT&T trading at almost $33. We got stocks like Verizon, which, which was around $53 not too long ago, now trading at almost $60. A lot of these, a lot of my favorite high yielders are now turning into just normal yielding stocks. Like Penmina Pipeline, I was buying this one in the 20s when it was yielding like almost 10%. Now with it being at 31 and some change, it's only yielding 6.09, which is still very high, but it just goes to show it's really, really vital that you get into these dividend paying stocks early and hold on to them because you can lock in that higher amount of yield that you'll be getting in return every single month or every single quarter from these dividend payouts. So since I am still trying to grow my dividend portfolio and I am still chasing yield, a few good options are to look into different closed end funds. This covered call ETF, the Q yield is one I've spoken about a lot over the last few weeks. This one is actually down right now since the NASDAQ 100 is getting beat up pretty bad. So this might be a good time to jump in on this one. Maybe, maybe not, I'm not exactly sure. I definitely am buying it up like crazy though. I think I bought between all my portfolios, maybe 200 shares just today alone. So my goal with this one is to try to get to 4,000 shares of it. At that point, we'll be earning right around $900 per month, or maybe even $1,000 per month in the form of dividends. And then from there, we can start building up a new position. But the problem is, once again, and you have to try to get in when they are cheaper. So during February 19th, this one is trading at almost $23.5. Now it's at $22.11. So this might be a good entry point, but at the same time, you, it just depends on how the market trades, but I will be trying desperately to get some of these higher yielders because I'm really chasing yield right now. Because I'm definitely chasing some yield right now, I'm very close to being able to say that my entire passive income investments cover my living expenses which I'm super, super pumped about. But there we have it for the portfolio reveals as well as how much I'm currently earning from dividends per year. Um, it's pretty fun to actually add it all up. It took a while to add all the different shares from all these different portfolios because I do have a lot of portfolios. And the reason I have multiple portfolios on different brokerages is for different reasons. A lot of these different brokerages offer you incentives like when you sign up, you get free stocks. I urge you guys to look into different brokerages and do what I do because it actually keeps things very organized and whatnot. So. But if you guys did like this video, please drop a like on this video. Leave any comments or questions down below. Make sure to please subscribe. Again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one. And lastly, you guys, we do have a Discord server that's dedicated to investors like you. It's full of dividend investors, option traders, day traders, and much, much more. So join the Discord. The link is down below in the description. It's absolutely free to join. And I hope we see all of you guys in there.